Hey T Squad, it's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 13, Episode 1 Review. Want to let you guys know that I'm taking uh the rest of today and Friday and Saturday off. Uh I'll be back with reviews Sunday. Um, I'm having a Halloween party here at my home. I'm gonna try to vlog it for you guys, but vlogging is just really not my thing. I like to be in the moment, you know what I'm saying? But if I can catch some footage for y'all, I most certainly will. So uh, do not expect a Kiki Wyatt's world review and my love in marriage Huntsville video will be up Sunday. Yeah. I think that's it. But anywho, let's get into the season premiere episode of Beverly Hills. It is back, honey, and in full effect. So this is the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season 13, episode one review. So uh, Dorit, honey, and her new fabulous brunette hairstyle, which I am obsessed with, the lowlights and the highlights. It just looked so good. And she looked younger. That cut was everything. Like, the ends was not split at all. It was like, come on, Dorit. It was like giving me collegiate vibes with the sweater, with the button up underneath. I was like, okay, okay. So she got some lady named Eagle Woman coming over to her house because she wants the ladies to sit down and discuss their problems because, you know, last year it was a lot, okay? So the ladies all meet in Malibu for Dorit's retreat. And, baby, when that Eagle Woman lady was walking with her little friend talking about some, I love that rock, how it's looking right at us. It looks like a grandfather. Grandfather protection. <laughs> it was like the rock. <laughs> The rock look like a grandfather. What kind of rock is this? Like Rock of Gibraltar? What is going on? And child, uh-uh. I was I was zoned out at that point, child. So Erica arrives solo dolo. And in her confessional, she says, I'm walking in like a man on my own island. My friend is gone. So if I was Dorit and Kyle. That would make me feel like, oh, so we ain't really your friends. Lisa was just your friend. I told y'all that Fox 5 crap, them hoes don't really mess with each other like that. Well, Erica and Lisa never messed with them like that. Because that would make me feel some type of way. Because I thought we was all BFFs. Like, what's the tea? Like, hmm? Why, why would you feel like you on an island all by yourself? Like, make it make sense if we supposed to be good girlfriends. So she walk in and everybody comment how skinny she is. And she's talking about some, it's hormones. Baby Dorit in her confessional talking about some, it's hormones spelled O-Z-E-M-P-I-C. <laughs> and I was like, come on, Dorit. Come on, Dorit. You must have seen the comments and watched some of our review videos because we need old Dorit back real quick for you lose your diamond child. The Eagle Woman lady started talking, y'all, and she's talking about how the eagle fly close to the sun, and the lady's just sitting there like, when is it going to be over with? Uh, can somebody pass me a sandwich? <laughs> like, what is going on? Like, it didn't really seem like they was really buying what she was selling. So then they decide to go around a group and air out their grievances. So Dorit kicks it off and says to Erica, I feel very hurt by you. And she brings up what happened at BravoCon last year when Erica said that she feels like Dorit and PK's marriage is on the rocks. So Erica was like, I really didn't want to answer that question. And I asked not to. <laughs> and Dorit was like, well, you delivered that answer like someone that really wanted that attention, Erica. <laughs> so Erica was like, Dorit, I'm a showman. And I walked right down to the center of the stage and I gave those people what they wanted. <laughs> so Dorit in her confession was like, standing up, going to the center of the stage, delivering the line, and then flipping your hair, coming back and feeling very good about yourself. That's not a showman. That's a biznai. <laughs> so I was like, come on, Dorit, again. You better call the girls to the table. So Dorit was like, you know, I kind of thought 
you were going to lead with an apology, Erica. <laughs> so Erica says, Doree, is your marriage strong? And Garcia was looking like the f and Doree said, like, oh, she going her. Oh, so we back beefing again, like we were seasons ago. Okay. So Sutton in her confessional Thomas. Well, the only thing I've heard about PK. And Dorit is when he got pulled over for the DUI. He may have had a woman in the car with him. But that's all I heard. <laughs> I was like, well, girl, you should have told us this last season. I mean, I wouldn't put nothing past PK and Dorit. You can't tell me PK and Dorit still smashing. Hell, I bet you PK and Dorit ain't had sex since she got pregnant with their last child. Like, they don't look like they bit more have sex. They look like they are with each other for the look or whatever. Like, no. Mm -mm. I can't really see Dorit climbing on top of that man and, or wanting him to climb on top of her. <clears throat> Gross. So, Dorit was like, my marriage is very strong, Erica. <laughs> so, Erica says, Right, so when someone says something like that, you're hurting, and so you lash out and you're mean-spirited, Erica. We all hurt each other's feelings in this group. I was getting hit from all sides, and I just needed a moment to catch my breath in this group. But as your friend, I would like to apologize if I was rough, if I was vicious. I've never felt so unheard. I love you all. And I'm very sorry. And see. <laughs> it's like, girl, who you think you is? Marlena Dietrich? Like, please sit down. You are not casting her burn. Like, it was so performative and seemed like she had already figured out what she was going to say. Then she crying, stone face, like she's... Uh, about to have an electrical output. Like, it was just like, what is going on? Like, everything about Erica is so robotic, and I didn't believe nothing of what she said. It very much confirmed to me that she came into this season knowing that Lisa was not going to be there and knowing that she had to put some fires out. All that bitch that she had been pulling the last two seasons she knows that she needs to build alliances and friendships with other ladies. So she had to come into this season kind of playing um, defense instead of offense. And I don't I don't believe nothing that you're saying. It's mighty funny now that Lisa gone, now you and Dorit beefing. Because y'all were never friends in the first place. Y'all were just friends of convenience. And I wouldn't have accepted that apology. Because why are you just not apologizing, apologizing to me when the cameras is on? When we start filming. That happened almost a year ago. Like, come on now. No. So, and y'all tell me what y'all think about my Dorit and Sutton and Erica voice. Uh, if y'all want some Keisha's, uh theaters from Beverly Hills, child. Because you know, I would love it. Okay? So, after that, here go Kyle rushing over to her, giving her a hug. I'm like, Kyle. Ooh. Kyle. Ooh. Oh, she just like a little net. So, um, Garcelle in her confessional says she ain't sure if this is really real from Erica. She peeped game, but she was like, you know, I'm willing to give her a chance, but I got my eye on you, girl. So then her go, Kyle. You know the stuff with Kathy. I was literally sitting there and I felt like I was resting out to see I looked up and everybody was just like and then Kyle and her confession I did expect more from Sutton and Dorit Sutton is a very social person I get it you want to be friends with Kathy because she has a lot of parties wait a minute back it on up so Instead of holding Erica and Lisa accountable for all that they did to you and your family last season, you're now placing the blame on Sutton and Dorit. I'm even more shocked about the Sutton part because what do you think Sutton owes you after the way that you went after her last season and been going after her? 
what you ain't never had Sutton's back so why would you then expect for her to have yours and why would you then expect for her not to be friends with Kathy just because y'all into it and I don't think that Sutton is that thirsty of a person that she gonna be running up in behind Kathy just to go to some parties like Sutton is already that girl like so what are you talking about Kyle Kyle you coming into this season all wrong all wrong all wrong already like you should have been directing your attention over there to the ice man okay Erica and checking her on all the things that were said and done last season regarding your sister once again you never have your sister's backs you always are playing the victim and deflecting and that's why I don't nobody like you so Garcelle stepped up and was like, you know, I felt for you, but I was also confused by you because I thought you're not going to go to the people who are coming for your family. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. Uh, over there. Like, and Kyle just sitting there looking stupid in the face and going to say in her confessional, why is it that Garcelle's not getting that my sister came for me and my family? Um, we don't know for sure if those things were said. We're going off what Lisa is telling you that she allegedly said about y'all. We don't have no physical proof that that was said. Do I honestly think that Kathy was saying some off the wall stuff about uh, Kyle? Absolutely. They sisters. They sisters. 100% I believe that. But yeah, your sister might have said some slick stuff regarding you, but at the end of the day, that's your sister. Y'all can talk about each other, but the fact that you allow your homegirls to then talk about your sister, go after your sister in such a malicious way, and you just sit back and allow it, that you're going to let some so-called friends come at your family like that, and you don't stick up for them or anything, like, come on, it's like, apples and oranges like it don't compare Kyle like you are really trifling you are a fake two-faced person you're not loyal to anybody but yourself really honestly truly like I cannot stand Kyle cannot and after seeing this episode I wouldn't be mad if Kathy don't ever speak to her again because you are the worst you're the worst do I think that Kathy uh needs to learn how to respect her as an adult and talk to her better absolutely 100 percent. like nobody should have to stand for somebody talking to them crazy but at the end of the day Kyle just don't got no loyalty for nobody and so there for that I just can't mess with her so all the ladies do a little group hug and they supposed to be starting off fresh oh whatever so then Sutton is at her store child and Jennifer Tilly comes by they've been good Judy's for years and they sit down and have lunch and Sutton talks about how her ex-husband, you know, controlled their money. She said when she met him, she didn't, he didn't have anything. They grew, you know, his empire, their empire together. And, uh, they both were working in the beginning. Then when he started making money, he didn't want her to work anymore. So she stopped working. And then it became him giving her an allowance every week for money. And then eventually the allowances stopped. And it was basically like, I give you what I give you when I give it to you. And he was basically controlling her with money. And so she was like, she would never let anybody do that to her again. And we then find out that baby Sutton is getting $300,000 a month in spousal support. That's just spousal support. Do she get child support too? Girl, how much money do her ex-husband got? $300,000 a month, y'all. That's like winning a lottery. Girl, I don't even know what I would do with that type of money each month. Like, I, that would scare me to have that type of money each month, honey. Like, oh my God. Like, then on top of that, she getting that money. She getting the show money. What any, her, her the money she making from that little store. Like, sudden is set. Man, I'd be such good friends with sudden. But I would be friends with sudden anyway because she a cool chick. But 300 G's a month. Ooh, baby 
So Erica has therapy with that therapist that used to be on um, VH1 for like, it was like for the sober shows or whatever. I, I remember she was a counselor on like the sober shows and like couples therapy or whatever. So she's having a session with the lady and she says she needs, the therapist tells her that she needs to be a better friend. And Erica asks, how do you do that? And the therapist says, you're going to need to look at what your friends are going through and you're going to need to have empathy for them. Erica says, where does that come from? How do you, how do you develop that? How, how do I get that? She really is a sociopath. <laughs> what? You don't have empathy? You don't even know what it is and how to get it or how to feel it? I refuse to believe. Like, th th that had to be an act. Like, what? What? Like, that lady literally could be a serial killer. Like, it's something wrong with her. It's something wrong with her. It is something wrong with her. Like, how can anybody say that they're could that they're they could be her friend? Because she don't give a damn about no what? Like she's crazy. She don't even know what it feels like to care about somebody else's feelings or what they're going through. Like, that's weird, bro. That is beyond weird. Girl, I'd be sleeping with one eye open around her because I wouldn't trust her not a damn bit. No. So then Kyle visits Dorit at her house and they have lunch with each other. And we find out that Kyle has been sober for seven months now. She's really into her fitness, getting her life together because she says she didn't like how she acted at Garcelle's birthday party last year. I don't really think that was the case. I think it's her being with her new lesbian lover. But okay. So she tells Dorit that she saw her sister Kathy at Sutton's holiday party and that they were civil to one another, but she's not taking crap from anybody anymore. And with that, I 100% ride with Kyle on that because you can't uh, allow people to treat you anyway. And people will do what you allow them to do to you. So with that, that does need to be nipped in the bud when it comes to her and Kathy's relationship and this fear that she has of Kathy. But that still don't mean that you ain't a sister, okay? Because you are. So Kyle was like, you know, I don't deserve the things that she said about me. And some of them you do. So Doree says that she struggled last year with PTSD from the break-in and that uh, PK was gone all the time to London, and she wondered, like, would their marriage survive? And Kyle was like, you know, we've all gone through that or whatever. Like, that's not anything that's not normal in a relationship to have those down moments. So it's already setting us up that it's issues between her and PK going on. And Kyle and Mauricio. So Garcelle and her twins, Jade and Jax, head out to have a picnic at the beach. Along the way there, they stop at a gas station to get gas, and Jade hops out to pump the gas, but he don't even know how to pump the gas. He wastes gas all on the ground, worried that he gonna blow up, don't know what he doing, okay? Keep that in mind. So they get to the beach. Jade got a little girlfriend um, named Ashlyn that he is obsessed with. Cute little black girl, love it. I was even more shocked that she was black. I was like, thank you, Jesus. Sorry, white people, but I was just like, thank you, Jesus. So Jade asks to stay with their mother another week. And she was like, yeah, as long as, you know, your father says it's okay. Because I guess maybe the little girlfriend stay closer to the mama. So Garcelle was like, you know, uh, you said the other day they're going back and forth sucks. Jax was like, I think it would be much better if we didn't. Now, when Jax speaks, he speaks very analytical, very straightforward. He doesn't mince his words, which I don't have a problem with until later on when you can tell that when he talks to his mother, there is a bit of spite in his voice when it comes to Garcelle. 
So, um, like I said, Jax was like, I think it would be much better if we didn't. Jade was like, we were with dad for like a year. Garcelle was like, I wasn't gone for a year. I was gone for three weeks. Like, that's a big exaggeration. You up here talking about some, I, your mom was gone for a year and she was gone for three weeks. What? And so, Jade gonna talk about some, well, three weeks is basically a year. It's not. It's not. And I wish that Garcelle would have said it like that. Like, what are you talking about? If we gonna talk, let's talk. Okay? So, Garcelle says, how did that make you feel? Because I could tell you were annoyed that I was gone for so long. I do feel guilty that my work sometimes takes me away. This is your opportunity to voice how we run our household. Now see, now see, now see, now see. I think that it's really important to have open dialogue with your children. But you talking about some how we run our household. Are, are they paying any bill? Any insurance? Are they buying groceries? I'm I'm confused. They name on the mortgage. And I can understand her feeling mom guilt about having to work, but I have to work to provide for us. That's a given. And my job will take me away at certain times. That's just life. Do you do the same thing to your father? Pretty sure they don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. so she gives them the floor to speak how they feel. Jax was like, um, Jack says that he would like more freedom, but she thinks that he has enough freedom as it is. Garcelle says, I feel like you're not letting me parent you. Like if you're sick and I say, can I give you this or that? You're like, I got it. Jack says, that's fair. And I understand that you want to be more of a parent to us, but I needed that two years ago. Most of the parenting and teaching me how to live, I learned on my own. What you mean you learned on your own? If she ain't never been away from y'all that long, but for three weeks, what are you saying that she's just not a hands-on parent? Like, I need more context. Like, is, is Garcelle present in the house but not present as a parent like because i'm like what's going on that you saying confidently that you basically have raised yourself the last few years i need more context on what's going on in this household so garcelle was like so are you saying i wasn't your mother then and he said yeah and jay looked at him like what the fuck you say like have you lost your mind like so that's making me feel like is he putting 10 on 20? Is he over-exaggerating? Or is he honestly telling how he feel? And even his brother was looking like, oh, you taking it there? Like, what's going on here? Because I just felt like in that moment when he was speaking to Garcelle, like there was some spite there in his voice. And I felt like he was trying to punish her. I don't feel like he was like, honestly giving his thoughts and his feelings and you know not feeling no type of way or it was like it was a it was a bite there that didn't sit well in my spirit and he came across like a very entitled little prick to be honest with you he really honestly did because I have open dialogue with my son but I've never gotten that feeling from him like he low-key don't like me or got an issue with me. You know what I'm saying? And that's how Jax was coming across to me. And I'm looking at him like, what's, what's the tea? You want a box? Like, cause what's the, what's the, what's the deal? Like, I need to know, like, is Garcelle that really a messed up a mother? And I don't really get that vibe from her. You know what I'm saying? Especially with how things worked out with her oldest son. I would think that she would have, even been more hands on with the twins, which I, I don't really think that this mama is this woman is a deadbeat mama, but it's something about that little Jax that I don't like. Mm -mm. So Jax was like, you know, there are times where I needed more than what you were giving me in terms of parenting, but as of now, I don't need that much parenting anymore. It's that simple. And he was like, you do know that my intention isn't to hurt you, but I just think what needs to be said needs to be said if it hurts or not. <laughs> what 
Woo, baby, we would have got to throw them in the sand because who you talking to? Like, it's one thing, like I said, to voice your, your, your feelings, but there still needs to be a, a layer of respect there and uh, care about someone else's feelings when you speak. And I can understand he might have a type A personality, but baby, that's something that you're going to need to work on moving forward in life. You just can't be so like cutthroat with people like that and just show no, her son is Erica. Jax is Erica. Garcelle, your son is Erica. He's not, he going to grow up and not know what empathy means because it's obvious that he doesn't have that emotion in him like Erica. Oh my God, he's literally little Erica. He don't know what emotions are like, huh? So my thing is, you talking about some, you don't need parenting anymore. That was something you needed a few years ago. You needed more from her then than you do now. Look, nigga, you ain't even know how to pump gas. But you talking about some, you don't need parenting no more. You got it. Oh, you got it at 15. Oh, uh, okay. Now, see, with some with a child like him, you gotta show him better than you can tell him, cause he one of them little kids that he think he know everything and don't know nothing about life. And see, where Garcelle, I feel like she messed up in that moment. Instead of blaming herself and feeling bad like she messed up, it should have been like, oh, okay, got it. And baby, the next day. He would have came home to a whole new household. Oh, you don't need parenting anymore. You got it? Oh, uh, okay. So when you need clothes, you got it. When you need to eat, you need to buy your own food. Oh, ho, ho. when your cell phone bill needs to be paid, you got it because you don't need parenting anymore. All right. Uh, schooling, if you go to a private school, oh, you're grown. You don't need me to parent you anymore because you got it. You pay for your tuition. Oh, the clothes on your back. You don't need those things, do you? Because you technically didn't pay for it. I did. The bed you sleep on, that's mine. The video games that you play, oh, that's mine too. You have nothing but you. So since you don't need my parenting anymore, you're you're free to go fly like a bird. I'm like a bird, I know if I way. Like, that's the type of uh, teaching that he needs to show him that you might think you know everything. You might think that you're grown, but you ain't. He need, literally needs to come home, everything in that room, gone. You grown, remember? You don't need my parents and you don't need my assistance anymore. So my job is done you got it that's the type of lesson he needs to learn i wish he had a friend like me because <laughs> our baby who the jacks would get it together real quick okay so mind you the other little boy ain't got nothing to say he just missed his girlfriend <laughs> he good he love his mama like he all right that's what make me feel like the other little boy got like actual beef with her i don't know if it's still from the father or what like I, I don't know i don't know about him so um garcelle says to him for the times you felt like i wasn't there enough i'm sorry and jack says and i'm sorry too i'm glad that we both can admit our faults from the past and mature from this Or say you better lock your door at night <laughs> and sleep with a, a knife underneath your pillow. So at the end of the episode, Kyle is at home with Mauricio. And um, she said that they have had a challenging year. Girl, y'all have had more than a challenging year. We've been seeing the cracks in that relationship ever since last season when he was openly flirting with Dorit and Dorit was kissing this man on his shoulder. But okay. So um, they sit down and he was like, how many tattoos you got now? And she was like five. And Mauricio was like, oh, I only knew a three of them. And Kyle says, well, maybe you should be looking at my body closer. And Maurice, Mauricio was like, what's going on with her? Like, you can tell he's not used to her talking to him crazy and getting smart. He's used to Kyle being the happy-go-lucky wife. I'm going to do what you say. I'm not going to argue with you in public. 
um, you run the household, you run me, you run the children, you make the decisions and I just go along to get along and I'm just a cute little trophy wife, ex-child star. So you could tell he was looking at her like, what? Like, okay, I'm going to let this slide. You know, the camera people are here. Like, what, what's going on? So, um, Mauricio was like, I think that's enough. Yeah. And Kyle said, I don't know. I think I'm going to get another one. And Mauricio says, that's enough. Five tattoos is a lot. Well, first of all, I, I didn't know you was my daddy. I didn't know uh, you was my keeper. I didn't know that I had to ask you permission of what I can do with my body. Like, excuse you, you lost your mind. <laughs> but that goes to show that he has ran that household in this marriage. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's okay to have your husband lead. You know what I'm saying? But it's certain things that you just going to tell me I'm not going to do like I'm one of your kids. Like, excuse you? No. So, uh, Mauricio was like, that's enough. Five tattoos is a lot. And Kyle says, if I want to, I will. It was like a little kid bucking up to her daddy. And he's like, I will not allow that. Who, who are you? I couldn't be on no reality show. So, Kyle says, you don't even know how many I had. So, if I want one, I'm going to get one. It's my body. And he was like, stop being you don't need any more tattoos. Like he was looking at her like, I can't believe we going back and forth about this. Like I said, no. And then you defy me with these cameras there. And so Kyle was like, you don't have a choice. I'm at a point in my life where I don't have to explain anything to anybody anymore, including you. And Mauricio was just sitting there like, what the f is going on? Like, huh? And the episode goes off. Now, one thing I will say is I appreciate Kyle sticking up for herself because you're not about to tell me what I can and cannot do with my own body. Like, okay, if it was like something with our household or finances, yeah, that's something that we need to discuss with each other. But you're not going to tell me what I can do with my body. And you ain't even know how many tattoos I had in the first place. Um, Kyle was on Watch What Happens Live last night and... They asked, Andy asked her about the photographs that were taken this week that paparazzi caught Mauricio and his dance instructor on Dancing with the Stars holding hands out in public. Um, and she says that she was very hurt by that and that that's why she took down her posts supporting, um, you know, people voting for them on Dancing with the Stars. And she was like, it's obvious that there's something going on between them. I don't know how deep it is, but it's obviously that it's something. My thing is, oh, and she also admitted that she was the one that initiated their separation. She wanted it. I think that Mauricio has cheated on Kyle throughout the years. I think that, that he's had indiscretions that she probably dealt with behind closed doors, but that she probably ultimately, ultimately uh, turned her face to. Um, I do think that she's going through like this, I don't want to say midlife crisis, but like this awakening in her life where she's about to take charge of her life or whatever and stop letting people mistreat her, which I 100% ride behind that. But my issue with Kylie is you initiated the separation. Okay. You have been openly flaunting this friendship with that lady, Morgan Wade. And it's obvious that y'all are in a relationship and y'all keep on saying y'all just good friends. Okay, girl, y'all good scissoring friends, but okay, girl. Um, and what I can say about this is that we're seeing more and more of these Hollywood relationships where everybody was coming down so hard on Will and Jada for their situation when it's so many other celebrity couples doing the exact same thing. Kyle and Mauricio are literally doing what Jade, Jada and Will did for the last seven years. We're separated and we're seeing other people. But see, Kyle got in her feelings when he started being open with his. <laughs> she didn't got in her feelings now. She mad. You know what I'm saying? Um, just break up. Just break up or work it out. But I need for... Kyle to stop lying in our face acting like we don't know that you and this lady together like it's so obvious like it's worst kept secret in Hollywood stop it please please stop it and if you initiated the separation unless y'all had rules that y'all not supposed to see each other see other people then I don't think that Mauricio is in the wrong for anything that he did that's just how I feel 
Did y'all hear that Meryl Streep came out and said her and her husband been separated <laughs> for the last five or six years? Child, you never know what be going on in these people's household. But, um, yeah, Kyle, I, like I said, I root for her in certain areas, and then other areas I just detest her. She's just, ugh. But overall, I'm going to say that even though this season premiere wasn't like drama, drama feel, it had a lot of key moments that really touched me and made me think and evoked certain emotions. Obviously, it's almost a 40 minute video. So I'm going to give the season premiere of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I'm going to give it an A. I think the ladies came back really good. I'm, I'm excited about the trajectory of this season and where it's going to go and how things are going to un fold so let's talk about it all you guys down below in the comment section make sure to thumbs up this video like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button i love you and i'll see you on the next video bye